What's up guys, another video, another piece of plastic that gave me a dopamine high. When I bought it, we are looking at another LEGO Star Wars LEGO set. We are looking at the Imperial TIE Fighter. This is the latest rendition of the TIE Fighter. I know this set is also kind of a little dated. I think this is the last year it's going to be out, or by the end of 2023, I don't know. So let's take a look at this beauty. So for our first minifigure, obviously, it is the TIE Fighter Pilot that it would just be wrong by LEGO if they did not include a TIE Fighter Pilot in the TIE Fighter LEGO set. The printing is done really well, nothing too crazy, it's just a LEGO minifigure. But one thing I did notice is the silver stripes going down our boy's helmet. I thought that was a little weird, so I did some research, and it turns out that in A New Hope, for like five seconds, there is a TIE Fighter Pilot with silver stripes going down his helmet. As far as I know, he is not a named character in the movies, books, so on the box it will just say TIE Fighter Pilot when you do get this set. But I did want to see if there was any significance or meaning behind these stripes, and it's just it's just a design choice. It is purely a design choice for aesthetics, which I think is really cool, and it kind of shows in the Star Wars universe that TIE Pilots did kind of want to make their helmets uniquely theirs and you know build personality around their outfits so yeah overall solid minifigure solid prints and a nice little detail added by lego so for our second minifigure we do have an ra-7 protocol droid named ni-l8 which if you remove the dash it's nil8 which sounds like annihilate you know nil8 annihilate i don't know if that's a pun put in by lego but if so, I caught it, very cool. If not, then I'm just an overthinker. And the fun fact about this minifigure is this is an original character by Lego because as far as I'm concerned, there are only three RA-7 protocol droids that I know of that we see in Star Wars media that work for the Empire. There is 4D6-J-A7, which is from Rogue One, and then we have PZ7 and AP5 from Rebels. So I think it's a little cool that Lego made their own original, unless there's a book or some source material I haven't read. Uh, otherwise, going back to the minifigure, printing is pretty solid, no complaints on my end. Just a solid minifigure, nothing overboard, nothing underboard. So yeah. <laughs> and the last minifigure included in this set is our favorite Imperial foot soldier, the Stormtrooper. Nothing too crazy about him, just your run-of-the-mill Stormtrooper. The print is really good, nothing too crazy. Um, I don't have any behind-the-scenes or fun fact lore to tell you like I did with the pilot or the droid. So yeah, um, overall just a really good minifigure. And yeah, let's get on to the TIE Fighter. So, with this all built and done, I do have to say this is probably my favorite LEGO TIE Fighter we've gotten so far aesthetically. Like, I can't say, like, from a building standpoint or a play feature standpoint or, you know, what I'm trying to say. Like, from a mechanical standpoint, I cannot say this is the best LEGO TIE Fighter because I don't own them all. But from aesthetics and visuals, I can say that this is probably my favorite one. It's very clean. It's very slick. It's in scale with the minifigures, which is... A thing I really like I'll touch up on that in just a second but I do have to say this is my favorite Lego TIE fighter we've gotten so far um, my favorite TIE variant that we've gotten so far is the red TIE interceptor I do have that that is probably one of my favorite Star Wars sets out there um, but going into scale I really like how this is in minifigure scale that is just bonus points for me not to say I hate out of scale lego sets like there are exceptions like this the display sets like the ucs sets you can make that as big or as small as you want that's fine because it's made to be out of scale but when it's a play set uh i really like it when it's in scale and like the red tie interceptor that is a play set but it is 
very out of scale that is a very big ship for the minifigures and that is one of my favorite lego sets it's just bonus points when a set is in scale just to make that very clear but overall very happy with how this tie fighter did come out um let's take a deeper look into this set so here is the first feature is the cockpit it can be opened via window or top hatch i'm just gonna do a top hatch because that makes a lot more sense than opening the window at least in my opinion and then up front we do have the two kind of blasters uh projectile things that lego likes to add and how you'd shoot them is you literally just push them out and they shoot out just fine um, they don't need no trigger or anything and then to reload them you would just push them back in the same way they would be fired just you know reverse you, you know what i mean um but yeah that's pretty much all the features that and playability that the tie fighter has so one thing i do want to address before i do my outro and final thoughts and all that is there is an alternate build for this set and i know i did an alternate build for the 501st battle pack and I did an adjustment for the AAT Lego set, but um, I did think about doing the alternate build for this, but I didn't. I did not keep tradition because I'm not even saying I'm saying tradition like I'm known for this, but uh, I didn't do this because this is my o this would be my only original Tie Fighter Lego set I would have, and the alternate build in question is turning this into a Tie Interceptor. There are enough parts in this set to turn this regular TIE Fighter into a TIE Interceptor, which is really cool. The TIE Interceptor is my favorite TIE variant. But like I said, I don't own any other just normal TIE Fighters. So I figured, you know what? I'll just keep it as is, respect the fact that this is like my only one. If I buy another one of these, I'll do that. And I might put it on YouTube, might as a short or something. But I really just, I did think about this. I really struggled because I really do like the TIE Interceptor. But I just want to get that out of the way. I will put a picture of what the alternate build looks like. I will put a link in the description to a video telling you how to do that. Um, but for the time being, I will not be doing that. So with that out of the way, just my final thoughts. I think this is a really good Lego set. If, you, if you're looking for a Starfighter or an Imperial themed Lego set, I would recommend this one. It's not that too crazy of a build. It gets a little repetitive with the wings. But overall, I think LEGO did a very good job with the detail and the accuracy on the TIE Fighter. And I actually really like the minifigure selection on a TIE Fighter. Usually, um, you'd think you'd get like one minifigure because only one minifigure can fit in a TIE Fighter. But I really like how they added a protocol droid and a stormtrooper just for that variety and just, you know, the additional value of this set. So, yeah, good job on LEGO with this minifigure selection and the build overall for this set. If you enjoyed this video, I would really like it if you liked and subscribed. I'm not gonna make you comment. I'm not gonna make you ring that bell because the bell's fucking broken. But, you know, just knowing that you liked the video enough to subscribe to me is more than enough. Even the view is just all I need. The view, I just need to know that people are watching this because that means, you know, it's reaching people meaning i have the motivation to make more of this stuff because i really do liking i really do liking i really do like making these youtube videos and you know i have a bunch of stuff planned and with that out of the way i will see you all in another one